Hello. Uh, today, I am before you to discuss something about uh, literary forms. In the first session, I'll be dealing with uh, the literary forms related to poetry. Let's discuss what is poetry and then what are the important literary forms? Poetry plays a very important role in literature and particularly in human life. Uh, and we know that everyone loves poetry. Every, everyone has the poetic mind. There are some people who express themselves in the form of words. Otherwise, all are poetic in nature. For the reason, poetry is quite near to our life and we love it for a variety of the reasons. So let's understand what is poetry and later discuss some important literary forms related to poetry. When we look at the meaning of poetry, poetry is a type of literature based on interplay of words and rhythm. The very idea of the play of words and rhythm are very, very important. Whenever we are talking about poetry, we talk about the use of best words, best thoughts. Whenever we are talking about the definition of literature, we talk about the best that is thought and best that is written. Similarly, in poetry, we have this kind of expression, the interplay of words and rhythm. The very word rhythm speak about the musical quality in poetry. It often employs rhyme and meter, a set of rules governing the number and arrangement of syllables in each line. Sometimes there are rules. Some poets do not follow the rules. That is a different part of the story. I will talk about it later. But poetry is mainly rhythmic. Words are strung together to form sounds, images, and ideas that might be too complex or, or abstract to describe directly. Poetry is very, very short and compact compared to prose, novel, whatever the other genres of literature we are talking about. It is power packed, you know, uh, a, a form that, that has less words and more meanings. It is uh, fully uh, in a pregnant with meaning. Naturally, uh, a poet tries to convey the maximum meaning and uh, minimum words. So that's why in poetry, words are strung together to form sounds. There are sounds, there are images, there are ideas. Sometimes they may be very complex or abstract to describe directly. The poet explains them in the form of images, in the form of symbols. Let's, you know, uh, discuss some of the definitions of uh, poetry. Words first talk about poetry. Poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. It takes its origin from emotion recollected in tranquility. William Wordsworth is one of the famous poets of Romantic Age. He said, it is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Of course, these, these emotions, powerful feelings are recollected in tranquility, but poetry is mainly spontaneous activity. Whereas B.B. Shelley, who was also a romantic poet, 
he he has given a different uh, definition he was a more he philosophized poetry rather poetry is indeed something that is divine it is at once the center and circumference of all knowledge he used the word divine poetry is something divine now it is the center and circumference of all knowledge we get lot of knowledge we get lot of insights about life human beings nature it's something divine it is meditative and poet we have the word in indian context poet is also called rishi you know kavi rishi is considered as rishi so we have uh, the great poets like arabindo tagore tolstoy they reach the heights of rishi robert frost uh, one of the famous american poets to speak about poetry is when an emotion has found its thought and thought has found words there is the issue related to thought emotion has found its thought and the thought is converted into words so it speaks about the best thoughts expressed in the best words best thoughts in the suitable words is called poetry t.s eliot one of the most important modern poets who has some differences with the definition of uh, you know william wordsworth's um, definition he said poetry is not turning loose of emotion but an escape from emotion it's not an expression of personality but an escape from personality t s eliot believed that a poet cannot be involved with the emotion while writing poetry he should keep the emotion aside and personality aside and later the composition is an impersonal issue it is not the turning loose of emotion you cannot say immediately or spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings it's not just the expression of personality a poet tries to you know make distance or you know escape from the personality and compose poem so uh, this kind of uh, impersonal theory or a kind of a theory that is t s eliot is talking about is different from that uh, wordsworth spoke in his famous preface to lyrical ballads Matthew Arnold another uh, poet critic of uh, Victorian age says i called poetry is at bottom a criticism of life poetry speaks about life it is criticism of life that the greatness of poet lies in his powerful and beautiful application of ideas to life to the question how to live so uh, for matthew arnold poetry is nothing but expression of life it's a criticism of life analysis of life khalil gibran one of the famous poets from the east he says poetry is a deal of joy and pain and wonder with a dash of the dictionary again the question of joy pain wonder and words play a very important role in poetry so looking into all these definitions we have come to some kind of an understanding of what is poetry in poetry there is 
play of words. In poetry, there is thought. In poetry, there is image. In poetry, there is music, rhythm, and joy, pain, wonder. All these things constitute poetry. Let's discuss some important literary forms, uh, particularly related to poetry. I told you lyric, sonnet, ballad, ode, elegy, satire, mock epic. Today, I introduce you to a literary form, lyric. Lyric, normally whenever we are talking about uh, poetry, we use the word lyric for a short poem. Lyric is short. It's the most delightful and pleasing form of poetry. And lyric is liked by everybody because it is subjective. It expresses personal feelings of writers. One more thing why we like lyric is it is highly musical. Lyrics are musical. The word lyric itself is derived from Greek word lyre which means a musical instrument. It was to be played with a musical instrument. So obviously the Greek idea of lyric suggests its intimate connection with music. So poetry is equal to music is seen much in its uh, form lyric. So lyric has its uh, uh, in a musical quality. Lyric is personal, lyric is short, and uh, lyric is musical. So let, let me just talk about some important um, aspects of uh, lyric. It expresses single emotion effectively and powerfully. Uh, we don't have uh, narrative thought in uh, lyric. We don't have many emotions discussed in uh, lyric. Say for example, daffodils. In daffodils, the poet is speaking about the emotion related to beauty of daffodils. The poet says, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats over veils and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. He goes on talking about uh, the daffodils and the way he saw the daffodils, then he saw the daffodils, you know, uh, the, the very competition between the waves of the lake and the waves of created by daffodils and how daffodils even created in him. When on my coach and I lie in vacant and pensive mood, they flash upon my inward eye. My heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. So the whole idea of daffodils, the beauty of daffodils and the effect of daffodils on his mind are discussed. Say, take for example, to the cuckoo. Or take, for example, my love is like red, red rose. All these poems, Lucy poems, Solitary Reaper. So the elaborative style is not used in lyric. Elaborative style is used in epic. The language of lyric is characterized by beauty, property, and humanity. There is a beautiful use of language. So say, for example, and, um, the brook of uh, Tennyson, break, break, break of Tennyson. And another important thing of uh, this lyric is, it is highly personal. It touches almost all the aspects of experiences. So you have different types of lyrics like love lyric, the lyric of patriotism, lyric of religious emotions, the lyric of joy and sorrow. 
A lot of lyrics were written during Elizabethan period. Sonnets and lyrics were written heavily during Elizabethan period. You see huge number of lyrics produced in Romantic period in English, Victorian age, and even in modern periods. I, I don't have much time to discuss about lyrics in American literature or in uh, other literature, but there are a number of lyrics written in Indian writing in English. So uh, the major writers that I can quote from English literature is William Wordsworth, Daffodils, Lucy Pimes, To the Couple, Robert Burns, My Love is Like a Red Red Rouse, Blake's Tiger, Coleridge's Cloud, Byron's London, Arnold's Darbeach, Tennyson's Break, 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 Elizabeth Barrett Browning's How Do I Love Thee? So with this, I close discussion on lyric. One more important uh, literary form I just want to present before you is sonnet. Sonnet is also a lyric, actually. But here, the lines are given a kind of a limit. Sonnet is one of the shortest poetic forms in English literature. It is a lyric of 14 lines. And these lines are iambic pentameter lines. So there are certain prescribed rules in general, whereas lyric, there is no uh, definite limit for uh, lines. It may be less than 14 lines or more than 14 lines, but it is not long. But in case of sonnet, it's a 14 line poem. And uh, this sonnet was originated in Italy and Petrarch is called the pioneer of uh, sonnet. And uh, it was later borrowed into English by Sydney, Surrey. We, we read it about it in, in literature. So there are two types of sonnets. Petrarchan sonnet, Petrarchan sonnet. However, 14 lines is fixed in both the sonnet forms, but stanza forms are different. In Petrarchan sonnet, there is eight line poem, eight line stanza, that is octave, and one sestest, that is six lines. And normally the rhyme scheme in Petrarchan form is A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, C, D. That is Petrarchan. And Shakespearean sonnet. Originally, it is a Saray sonnet. Saray borrowed it. Saray modified it to the English style with the three quadrains. That is, one quadrain is equal to four lines. Four into three, that is 12 lines. And one couplet. Couplet is a rhymed, you know, two line stanza. Rhymed. Two lines stanza. So obviously, Shakespeare popularized it in all his uh, 154 sonnets he had written. He popularized it. That's why it is known as Shakespearean sonnet. Its rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. So A, B, A, B is one quadrain. CDCD is another quadrain, EFEF is another quadrain, and last one is GC. So uh, this uh, sonnet uh, in English was introduced in uh, 16th century by Watt and Surrey, and Watt and Surrey imported it from Italy. As I told you, uh, Watt followed Petrarchan model and Surrey and developed a new model with three quatrains and uh, two couplets. However, Saray's sonnet is known as Shakespearean sonnet as William Shakespeare mastered this form. So uh, theme of sonnets are normally love. Earlier, it was mainly love. 
Petrarch wrote his, his sonnets on his beloved uh, Laura. Uh, Sydney sonnets were addressed to Penelope. Of course, Sydney sonnets deal with the press. You know, frustration, disappointment, because Penelope, uh, he, he, his, his was not a successful love. She married Lord Rich, and uh, his sonnets uh, deal with, particularly Estrophel and Stella, deal with his disappointment. Shakespeare, Spencer wrote uh, sonnets on his uh, beloved uh, Elizabeth Boyle, his Amorati. And deal with uh, it's, it's a famous sonnet sequence and Shakespeare's sonnets deal with the dark lady and WH. Uh, you know, he wrote 154 sonnets, uh, including uh, True Love, sonnet number 116. Wonderful sonnets have been written. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? A variety of sonnets were written by Shakespeare. Of course, modern sonnets are dealing with a variety of uh, themes, uh, love, patriotism, art, nature. Uh, to uh, speak about some important sonnets in uh, literature, uh, we can speak about uh, Shakespeare's true love, Milton's on his blindness. When I consider how my light is spent, Keats's famous sonnet on first looking into Chapman's Homer, W. B. Yeats's Lyra and the Swan, Wordsworth, the word is too much with us of late, we lay waste our powers in getting and spending. A wonderful sonnets have been written by uh, various poets. So a sonnet is a very important uh, uh, literary form in English literature, which was greatly developed in 16th century. We have a total miscellany, which is also named as Songs and Sonnets. We have Estrophel and Stella by Sidney, Amorati by Spencer, and uh, Shakespeare sonnets. Later, we have great sonneteers, of course. Wordsworth wrote sonnets, Keats wrote sonnets, uh, and uh, Eats also wrote sonnets. So sonnet remain uh, one of the wonderful uh, literary forms um, of poetry. With this, I'm going to uh, close today's talk. Thank you very much.